Hello, welcome to Retro Computers and Electronics Workshop. In this video is going to be basically the first video of a series of them to learn how to program the Commodore 64, basically to create sound and graphics on a Commodore 64. This is not a video about learning the basic programming language, but it's mostly, but we will, we will learn part of it. And we will dig into all of that, but basically I want to focus this into learning in a way that we can immediately do something. We can immediately have uh, graphics and sound. So it's gonna be fun to get into something that we have an instant result, that instant uh, gratification, basically. We're gonna go through the process of learning basically how the Commodore 64 works as a computer in general, why those famous poke comments uh, did that magic that we saw on them. Even if you never use a Commodore 64, no worries, because we are gonna go through the whole process. We're gonna do that in a simulator mostly on the computer, because not everyone has a Commodore 64 in their home, but we can also see how that can be integrated in a real one later in other videos, and how to use that with the 64, which is a new, like a remake of the Commodore 64, which internally is basically an emulator, but it has a full real keyboard. The cool thing about the emulator is that everything that we do there, we can then later put that, for example, in a tape or a disc and run on a real machine. So today, let's see how to install the emulator and get our development environment ready. Let's get into it. Here we are. We are going to download the Vice emulator. This basically is an emulator for basically almost all Commodore uh, computers. In this case, we are going to focus on the Commodore uh, 64, which is what we are interested now to learn how to program with. So as you can see here, device emulator, it's, it's open source. You can download it freely. Just go to download and choose your operating system. I already have it downloaded on my computer. For example, in my case is OX10 and I use my Mac. So just go to download page and just choose the one that fits your configuration. I got the latest one, uh, it's it's fine. You don't need to go to on any older model unless you have an old uh, Mac. Once you have it installed, just go to Vice, open it, and you can choose here different Commodore computers to emulate. The SC model, basically the emulator, the SC one, is to have the Commodore version that is closest to the real one. It's not about performance to play games or anything like that. It's mostly about to have the most real emulator, which is what we are interested in here. This is the first screen uh, that we will get when we open it for the first time. Here you can configure several parameters. In this case, I some people like to have um, like a CRT emulation. Uh, in my case, well, when I'm using um, an emulator, I prefer to have it pixel perfect, mostly because I take screenshots for writing a blog post or something like that. So I'm gonna use that one also to avoid any kind of distortion when we are um, recording here, taking the, the recording the screen of my computer. To configure that, we go to settings, then settings, and here we choose the um, display and V2. So if I move this window here around, you will see that in this case, also I want to configure it in a way that looks better when I'm recording these videos. So the render filter I'm going to check a filter, so now you can see pixel perfect definition. I want to have the border mode to be in full. And about the color palette, well, I it depends, of course, what you like. But in this case, I'm choosing this one CCS at 64 because it gives me a little bit brighter um, uh, screen, which is better for recording these videos. Uh, the first one, the one for by default, the Pepto Paul, this is probably the closest one to the real Commodore 64, but for the purpose of these tutorials, I prefer to give priority to readability instead of um, consistency of what the system 
look like in, a, in its time because anyway this is an emulator so if you want something real in terms of visually better to get a, a Commodore 64 okay now the next thing that we need to do is to create a disk drive basically we want to be able to save our programs when we create them and also in that way we can export them and eventually put them into a real disk or a tape to be used on a real Commodore 64. In order to do that, we need to create an image of the disk. The image of the disk is basically a file on your file system. That file represents that disk. So you can move it around anywhere you want. You can copy and send it to someone. To do that, we go to File, and in the different options, there is one here that says Create an attached an empty disk image. This is what we want because we don't have one yet. Click on here and I'm going to put that on my desktop. And yeah, well, this is going to, if you're using Mac OS, it's going to ask you for permissions for that. So anyway, I'm going to put here on my desktop and I'm going to choose the driver you need to number eight, which is the most common. Just you can leave it as default and the type of the image D64. So I'm going to call this C64Dev and save and it was created on my desktop. Here we have the file that we just created. Okay. So now that disk is attached to the emulator. So from the emulator point of view, it means that you basically connected a disk drive to it and there is a disk inside. To load the contents of the disk, we type the command load, dollar, eight, eight is for the drive that we attached before. Remember, we marked it as eight. And now when we type list, we're gonna have a list of the files that are inside. Right now it's empty. So let's create um, an example, a program. So let's type new that will clear any list that we have there, any, any program, any basic program that we have list. So we type list again, it's empty. So now let's create one simple program, temp print hello 20 go to 10. Okay, now list again, the program is there. If we run this program, it's just going to print uh, forever the word hello. To stop it, we can press on the emulator, I mean, on our keyboard, the, the key, ESC escape key. That will be the equivalent on a Commodore 64 of the run stop key. Okay, now that we have that program there, we want to save it. So save, test, eight for the drive, saving test. So now, Basically, what it's doing is just save that program into a virtual uh, drive, into that file that is an image of, virtual image of that file. So if something happens, if this uh, emulator crashes or something, we have our program there. There is another way to save the status of your emulator uh, without the need of saving into a file, which is go to snapshot. And here you can say save, save snapshot image. What it does is, again, you can go you put it into a desktop anywhere you want. By doing this, it's gonna save the current state of the uh, emulator. So, but, so you can recover it later. What I don't like about this is it's not very easy to share this kind of format because let's say that, for example, you're programming something and then by mistake, uh, your program is corrupts something in memory or, cor or Maybe it could even overwrite parts of the same program by, by mistake. And so if you save that state as a state, then you will basically save any bug, any issue that exists in that very moment. So it will be very, very difficult to try to fix that. But if you save onto a file like a normal disk file, then in that case, it's going to be way easier because if something happens, you can always restart a new machine, a new emulator, clean, and then load your program and from there you can debug it and try to fix what pro whatever problem happened before. So let's test that we actually have everything in place. We go here to file, reset, 
hard reset basically it's like we turn on and off the computer now let's test if we have our program there that we saved before so run. Yeah, it's loading the content of the disk list here it is test load test oops when we list here we have here's all the content of our program and this basically concludes the most important part that now you know how to use emulator how to save and load files in the next video we are going to see how the binary and hexadecimal systems uh, work we're going to use them they're very important for programming on the Commodore 64. if you like this video please consider subscribing and give me a thumbs up and also please if you want you can support me on patreon which will allow me to create these videos on a more regular basis thank you and see you next time